welcome, I think, to year four of the ongoing impeachment of President Trump. I'm sorry that you have been dragged into this. I think the sign behind me says it very well. By the whistleblower's attorney, the coup has started and impeachment will follow. Ambassador, you weren't on the call, were you? The president, you didn't listen on President Trump's call and President Lindsey's call? I did not. You've never talked with Chief of Staff Mulvaney? I never did. You never met the president? That's correct. He had three meetings again with Zelensky and it didn't come up. And two of those they had never heard about as far as I know. Do you have any information regarding the president of the United States accepting any bribes? No. Do you have any information regarding any criminal activity that the President of the United States has been involved with at all? No. And you did not hear President Trump pressure or have a demand of any kind, as we've already established, correct? Correct, sir. So, uh, in this impeachment hearing today, where we impeach presidents for treason or bribery or other high crimes, where is the impeachable offense in that call? Are either of you here today to assert there was an impeachable offense in that call? Shout it out. Anyone? Taylor, is that you testified in your prior testimony that you have not had any contact with the President of the United States. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. Ms. Taylor, Mr. Kent, have you had any contact with the President of the United States? I have not. So not only no conversations with the President of the United States about Ukraine, you've not had any contact with the President of the United States, correct? That's correct. Okay. So you both know that this impeachment inquiry is about the President of the United States, don't you? But is it fair to say that uh, as you were listening to the call, you weren't thinking, wow, the president's, uh, president is bribing the president of Ukraine? That never crossed your mind? It did not, sir. Or that he was extorting the president of the Ukraine? It did or, not, sir. Or doing anything improper? Correct, sir. All right. Did either of you ever have any evidence of quid pro quo, <laughs> Ms. Morrison? No, ma'am. Ambassador uh, Volker. I did not. Any evidence of bribery? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Any evidence of treason? No, ma'am. No evidence of treason. With that, I yield back. Did the President of the United States ever say to you <clears throat> that he was not going to allow aid for the United States to go to the Ukraine unless there were investigations into Burisma, the Bidens, or the 2016 elections? No, he did not. Did the Ukrainians ever tell you that they understood that they would not get a meeting with the President of the United States, a phone call with the President of the United States, military aid or foreign aid from the United States unless they undertook investigations of Burisma, the Bidens, or the 2016 elections? No, they did not. You know, pretty much, Ambassador Volker, you just like took apart their entire case. Do you believe, because he only was telling us his opinion, do you believe in your opinion that the President of the United States demanded the President Zelensky undertake these investigations? No, sir. Mr. Morrison, you were on that call, and there was no mention of withholding aid on the call, correct? That is correct, Congresswoman. And there was no quid pro quo, correct? Correct. No bribery? Correct. No extortion? Correct. The four facts will not change, have not changed, will never change. The call shows no linkage between dollars and the investigation into Burisma or the Bidens. President Trump and President Zelensky have both said on the call, there was no linkage, there was no pressure, there was no pushing. Ukrainians didn't even know the aid was withheld at the time of the phone call. And most importantly, as has been pointed out, the Ukrainians didn't take any specific action relative to investigations to get the money released. All right, so again, just to, just to recap, you had three meetings with President Zelensky. No linkage in those three meetings came up. Um, Ambassador Taylor recalls that Mr. Morrison told Ambassador Taylor that I told Mr. Morrison that I conveyed this message to Mr. Yarmouk on September 1st, 2019, in connection with Vice President Pence's visit to Warsaw and a meeting with President Zelensky. This, this is what I can't believe, and you're their star witness. That I don't consider myself a star witness for anything. They do. You don't. No, uh, do. I don't. I President Zelensky held a press marathon with over 300 reporters where he said repeatedly and consistently over hours and hours that he was not aware of a military hold during the July 25th call. President Zelensky went on to confirm a number of things, that there was no pressure, that there were no conditions, that there were no threats on military aid. There were no conditions or pressure to investigate Burisma or the 2016 election, that there was no blackmail, that there was no corruption of any kind during the July 25th call, again, from his official press release. 
This all happens, by the way, in Warsaw, where Vice expired. President Pence meets with President Zelensky. And guess Ask what? Taylor. They didn't talk about any linkage either. The time of the gentleman's expired. The, the gentleman asked uh, if you could be wrong. Were you wrong when you said you had a clear understanding that President Zelensky had to commit to an investigation of Biden's before the aid got released, and the aid got released and he didn't commit to an investigation? Mr. I was not wrong about what I told you, which is what I heard. That's all I've said. I've told you what I heard. And that's the point. What that's you heard did not happen. It didn't happen. The fact is that the whistleblower was wrong about many of the facts as well. Correct? As Sir, I'm not intimately familiar with the whistleblower complaint, but I did not hear a demand in that call. So uh, no pressure, no demands, no conditions. Nothing corrupt, no, nothing, nothing on the call. That's what we heard President Zelensky say. But after listening for what is going on now, four hours and 21 minutes, after all of the secret hearings, after all of the leaks, after hearing witnesses such as yourselves give your opinions, it really comes down to this. One thing, one thing it comes down to. This is the transcript that the president has released of this phone call. There is one sentence one phone call, that is what this entire impeachment pr proceeding is based upon. And I got to tell you, if your impeachment case is so weak that you have to lie and exaggerate about it to convince the American people that they need to remove this president, then you've got a problem. And the American people have been lied to again and again on this. We first heard a lot about quid pro quo. And then many people realized that was meaningless. So they said, well, let's go for the fences then. Let's talk about extortion. Let's talk about bribery. Let's talk about cover-up and obstruction, for which there is zero evidence of any of that. We appreciate your insight. We appreciate your opinion. But all you can do is give your opinion of this. Hearsay can be much better evidence than direct, as we have learned in painful instances. And it's certainly valid in, in, in this instance. Well, gentlemen, yield because none of those exceptions would apply to this testimony. Well, we're not in a court, gentlemen, and if we were, the Sixth Amendment would apply, and so would rules on hearsay and opinion, and most of your two testimonies would not be admissible whatsoever. But and Ambassador Volter, Volker, I presume you got a readout of the call, is that correct? A very terse readout, but yes. In this tertiary readout of the call, Ambassador, from the U.S. participants, was there any reference to withholding aid? No, there was not. Any reference to bribery? No, there was not. Any reference to quid pro quo? No, there was not. Any reference to extortion? No, there was not. And I presume you also got feedback from your Ukrainian counterparts as to how the call went. Did they mention the withholding of aid? No, they did not. Did they mention any quid pro quo? No, they did not. And did they mention any bribery? No, they did not. And in fact, the day after the call, you met with President Zelensky. This would be on July 26th. That's correct. And in that meeting, he made no mention of quid pro quo? No. He made no mention of withholding the aid. No. He made no mention of bribery. No. So the fact is the Ukrainians were not even aware of this hold on aid. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. And Chairman Schiff also got the facts wrong again when he asked you this, quote, at the point they learned their aid was paused, wouldn't, they give them, wouldn't that give them added urgency to meet the president's request on the Bidens? And you answered, Ambassador Volker, quote, I think the Ukrainians felt like they are going in the right direction, and they had not done anything. They had not done anything on an investigation, end quote. Isn't it the case, Ambassador Volker, at one point, Chairman Schiff said to you, when you were truthfully testifying, quote, Ambassador, you're making this much more complicated than it has to be, end quote. It's page 127 from the deposition, is that correct? I remember that. But the truth is, the facts are indeed not complicated. Um, first of all, um, the whistleblower, who apparently was not on the call, advised the ICIG um, that he or she was concerned that the president's conduct constituted under Title 50 USC Section 3033, quote, a serious problem, abuse, or violation of law or executive order, end quote. Um, again, to be clear, uh, you didn't hear a violation of law or executive order as you listened to the call. Sir, I made no judgment about any illegal conduct occurring. The whistleblower also reported in starting this inquiry, um, asserted that, the pres that President Trump, quote, sought to pressure the Ukrainian leadership to take actions to help the president's 2020 
re-election bid. President Trump does not mention 2020 during the call, does he? No, sir, I don't believe he did. President Trump doesn't mention his re-election bid during the call, does he? Uh, sir, I don't believe he did. 